And if I go to client number one, you can see that he's walking and synchronizing correctly on the host peer and of course his local peer. Is this player going to correctly synchronize his animations? In the last stream, we looked at implementing this functionality, which was the rewindable state machine. It wasn't working, so I reached out to the team, guys working on it under uh, NetFox. They created this new on display state change signal, and that's provided through the state machine, which you get through the rewindable state superclass. So then you can just leverage this callback and update whatever the visual functionality you need. Oh, and by the way, someone just pointed out in my Discord that there's an issue with this project. Scenes aren't correctly opening. I'll have to investigate that further. So if you're running into something, please just be patient. I need to get this refactored and cleaned up and then push out again, because a lot of this is going to go away. Where we left off last week, we've got our host and you can see he's he's walking and his state's changing from a walk to idle and you know he can rotate and move. And then down here, it should work because this is between me uh, running on this client and the host machine which is in the top and you can see that i'm not receiving updates about the host's animation because i never got it right it's one of those things that it just doesn't broadcast that information uh, with my current code which is fine and then so this one over here isn't showing the animations correctly so i'm standing still but he's still walking that's the big issue here that i'm trying to resolve so i want to look at doing that today and if you look at the logs right now this spam here was also resolved and let's try to go to NetFox 1.14. We're not on 1.14. So let me try to do this with this update. It, it tends to blow away the current script that it should be attached to. So let's just manually realign that script to the proper node. So I think it's roll. I think it's rollback network rollback or rollback synchronizer. I think it's that. Yeah, it kind of blew away all my uh, changes there, so that's not cool. Um, I'll have to re-add those. That's interesting. I didn't think it would do that. So now I think we're back to where we were. So these are our input properties that govern the state properties of our rollback synchronizer. Transform velocity, uh, the models transform. So that's going to be like how we rotate our character. I spell that military mount. Yeah, I think I spelled it right. And the state machine, which is what the glue that glues the rollback synchronizer to the rewindable rewindable state machine. Let me rerun the project. OK, so the project has been reloaded. Uh, we still get one issue after tick loop on base. Um, this isn't my code. This is their code. That's a little concerning. Let me just try to move past that for now. Just to recap where we're at, I've installed the latest NetFox version. The only NetFox stuff in this entire template right now is this rollback synchronizer, tick interpolator, and the rewindable state machine with the two states. And you notice the issue of this not having a state inside of them or nested underneath them has gone away. So these one, two, three, four, these five nodes that I have right here, are the only NetFox things that I have in this project. In theory, I should be able to play it no, because, OK, I, I still think it's going to be broken because it's not a good idea to use these for like visual properties because it's not guaranteed the transition callbacks that are not guaranteed to run. So this enter is not guaranteed to run on the other clients. It's by design, so it's still going to break. So we still need to add an additional step, which is to add the um, the on display state signal. But first, let's just make sure that we're still functioning correctly. Right. So this is not really working at all. That's weird. He, he's synchronizing correctly on the host machine, obviously on the local machine where I'm moving him at the bottom, but not on the other client. It's that that is not being updated correctly. OK, so there is a problem here already off the bat. I'm not even able to get back to the expected broken version of this project. Um, so that's, you know, what do you do? I, you know, I have no idea. I, I'm not really sure. Let's just check the logs really quick and see. Um, OK, so right off the bat, this is why you check your logs. Uh, I have an invalid property. Uh, so I'm trying to reference, if you can see that, a transform, which is not a thing. So somewhere I must have a typo. So right here I have a typo and it looks like we are back to what we expected. So we see the 
animations are still broken as you can see on the left a screen down there it's he's still walking and nobody's actually moving so that you know that is the problem so we're going to try to address that right now let's try to implement this on state changed and just to just so we have an idea of what you know how to do that i like to look over at their example code because that's that's what the example's for. So if we go over the example code, if we look at the scripts, I think it's under player. I think we set up a on display state change and they connect that here with us, uh, you know, an inline anonymous function uh, or a lambda function, whatever you want to call that. So because this is set at the player level, my animations are tied to the state. So in theory, I should be able to do like new state dot whatever the property animation you know name or whatever and i should get access to that i don't know let's try it so let's just grab let's just do a blind copy paste and let's so we need to go to the player so you can see i have some old code here for the animation so let's just stick it right above it we don't have access to a state machine right here uh because it's named differently okay so we have our state machine we have our signal and we have our old state and new state and we don't have that so let me just do a print statement old state i'll just leave say new percent s and then i think we can just do a percent and then an array and we'll do old state comma new state and this should give us notifications between the transitions um i'm guessing we're going to get three for each transition if once i have all three running so if you check the logs now you'll see old state is idle and then it just prints out the node and then new state is move. And then we go back from move to idle. So that's a good sign. I like seeing that. So let's open another client. So these two rows, this row right here and this row right here are the print statements printed from the two clients or two peers respectively. And then you can see the two print statements going back to the idle state. So I don't have the print out of the network ID of the peer. I'm just going to assume that it's actually printing on the, you know, authority host and the client one respectively. Now let's do the third one. There's some jitters there with it synchronizing on initially. And I wonder if there's like a callback that you can say, um, once you get, once the player is established correctly in the game, then go ahead and show them. I've saw some people asking me about that on discord or maybe on the YouTube comments earlier. I haven't, looked at that yet but it's definitely going to be on my radar soon and i think it would be a nice improvement to this so if you are watching and if i don't create an issue for that uh let's go ahead and create an issue underneath that uh this template repository and so let me try here so we should see three three state transitions to walk and then three to go back to idle so there's three there you can see and i'm still moving so we don't have a state transition and then if i stop we should get three more and we do that's that's what we that's what we want to see so I think what I want to do now is see if we can actually grab the animation from that and apply it to the player. So we're doing all this stuff in enter and I'm going to remove all that. So we don't want to do that. So let's let me see what, what I oh, I think I was experimenting because I was thinking that maybe I needed to synchronize the current animation. I don't think we need to do that. I don't want to do anything with enter right now. All I want to do is get the animation name and the animation player and then play that. So let's just blow away this enter right now because we're not using it. Um, oh, there was another issue. I, I really uh, from my last stream, I, I, I ran into a problem because I the ready function was I was overriding the rewindable states ready function, you know, in the super class here. And it wasn't correctly setting up some important functionality. Now, I think the maintainer of this issue or the author of this issue had Take a note that there was a pain point with the ready function and it still seems to be there these important things and i i'm not sure if where they landed on that maybe maybe they said yeah well just let the you know developer decide how they want to handle that so i think this super ready is necessary if you're using the rewindable state but because we're moving away from this strategy I, i'm going to actually comment this all out because i don't need it yeah, I don't I don't know why this is complaining. That's strange. Um, I don't really think I need it, though, so I'm going to comment it out and see if it. OK, Yeah, I don't I don't really need it anymore, but let's look at the other state. Oh, maybe. OK, so let's get rid of that and let's also get rid of all this stuff. 
for now we'll just comment it out so we have a reference to have an idea of what we want to do now if i go back to player oh something just broke because now i'm getting i'm getting player issues everywhere i think i i think maybe there's a bug in this player script all right or a bug uh ah that's yeah that's that's why we're getting errors because i i have an unfinished i don't know why i call it bugs i just mean compile errors or whatever uh so let me see what i want to do here so we need access to yeah this was an attempt to solve this problem current animation uh so that's fine maybe i was trying to synchronize that at one point i'm trying to remember because i'm not synchronizing it here at all all we need to do is grab the animation player so i need to get it out. i have it already here ah, all right that so this was the original code from whatever like a month ago and let's go ahead and grab that again and we're going to establish a non-local variable i think we kind of need to make this a class level variable so let me just kind of stick it up here for now and then we'll set it there and all we're doing is just grabbing the animation player out of the player model that's where my animation player is and then in here okay so we need an animation name so we have animation player and so let's just make sure that we have an animation player if the animation player is good then go ahead and play it. But then we also need an animation name, which we don't have right now. And I think the animation name is gonna come from the state. So the state, let's just do var animation name equals state dot, what did I call it? Animation name, all right. So we have an animation name. And if we have a animation player and we have an animation name, if we have an animation player and we got an animation name, go ahead and play the animation. And let's also print that. All right, so what we're doing here is we have this inline callback as part of the on display state change that will get triggered each time there's a state change. So we're going to go from a new state to an old state. I'm, I'm sorry, from an old state to a new state. We grab the animation name and then we play it. So in theory, this should fix everything. But let me just make sure that I don't have any residual functionality that's going to throw a wrench into this. Uh, again, we're, we don't need animation player here anymore. And let's just look at the move state to clean it up as well. And we have everything kind of commented out. I think we're okay there. And, uh, oh, I don't have the parent reference that I, that I kill. Yeah, we actually need the parent reference. It was broken earlier because I left the code incomplete. So simple oversight. And I don't actually think we're accessing the parent in the idle state right now. Eventually we might. So that's fine. We'll, we'll add it when we need it, or we'll move all this to some common super class just to recap just so i can get my head around this when we change states the state the changes will be rollback aware so if you change to a state that you're not allowed or uh, maybe you lost a packet and all of a sudden like something's out of whack the netfox lag compensation should handle rolling back and re-simulating or running through what you had done based on your inputs and it will give and synchronize that correct state with all the other peers connected to you. So this callback should be called on all the peers and should tell and should animate the player, right? Because this is a player class and this will this will be on each peer representative of whichever client. Uh, so I think I think it should work. So if I look right here, play animation idle. So that's what we wanted. And if you look at him, he isn't idle. He's just kind of breathing there. I don't know why he's up in the air. That was weird. Uh, OK, so this is working. Or the host is working. So this is like full authority host. That's fine. And let's just drop in up here. And I don't know why he's not just falling to the ground. That's weird. OK, first moment of truth. Does our host correctly synchronize animations? And it does. Now, this didn't work before. OK, so we have our host communicating its animation. So if I stop, he's an idle. If I move, he's walking. And if I go to client number one, you can see that he's walking and synchronizing correctly on the host peer and of course his local peer. We don't really have any lag right now, so I don't think we're going to see anything. Is this going to work? Is this player, the screen on the right, going to correctly synchronize his animations? And it looks like it's working. He's not like continuously walking once I stop walking on the other clients or other peers like it was before. And he's able to walk around. And then when I stop, he stops on all screens. And I don't have any other functionality. I, I commented out jump and run because I was just trying to get this to work. Now, this looks really good. I'm excited that this is working. But 
does this work in a higher latency environment? I guess I can run this in AWS. I can create a dedicated server build and I can connect to it from my computer and we can just try it and see if it works there. All right, so I have an instance and I'm I just kicked it off. And so this is going to be on the West Coast of the United States. And I'm on the East Coast, so we'll naturally have a little bit of lag, probably between like 40 and 90 something milliseconds is kind of, you know, the average. OK, so here's our Godot project that I just created a dedicated server build from, uh, you know, from here, I uploaded this to EC2. Uh, so let me go ahead and run. And I'm not going to do host mode right now because we're running in dedicated server. So we're running a EC2 instance out there. I should be able to just join game. <laughs> wow. All right. So again, this is across the country. I mean, there's no lag between me moving and the character's responsiveness. So that's that's what you want to see. And you can see the states are changing on the host because of the print statement. So let's join as another player. Here's like the big moment of truth. Like, are we going to be able to synchronize this stuff correctly? And it looks like it's working. Nice. Great. So now I have a world. I have a lag compensated player. I don't know what the lag is right now. I don't have that uh, in this example. That's another thing I need to do. This is nothing fast. If you weren't making a super high, you know, fast paced first person shooter game or so, you know, where it's a Twitch heavy uh, game, I, I'm not I, I don't know if it would support that level of, you know, speed, but Anything underneath that would probably work great. I mean, this is it, guys. This this is this is really rounding out this multiplayer template. You can take this simple template and create a dedicated server build. You can play with your friends. You can get a cheap server somewhere, you know, pay maybe five bucks a month. Maybe you don't want to use AWS. Doesn't matter. Whatever server, you know, hardware, however you want to host it. In the cloud, there's a lot of cheap stuff out there. I have some resources in my Discord. There's a lot of people in my Discord that know a lot about this stuff and they'll be able to, you know, let you know. Next week sometime, I think I'm going to work on finishing out this project and then everybody will have it available and I'll try to iron out any other, you know, issues that it may be having. And I also want to add a uh, jump and run back in. So you'll see that and you can download that. And I want to keep adding on to this. And I'm also making a game, but I've been waiting on this to work before I start that game. I did a game jam a couple months back. I really liked what I came up with, and I just want to see that game through. Stay tuned and uh, keep an eye on that. This is a really good starting point. I don't see any lag or anything. Seems like everything is working as expected, and I'm really happy how this turned out. So that's kind of all I wanted to do today, and it worked out really well. It happened. It was very easy to do this. I'm so relieved that this is finally working. Thanks to everybody that's been working through the NetFox stuff. If you're interested in this template, please keep an eye on it. If you have issues, hit me on Blue Sky, hit me in Discord, um, come follow me on Twitch or sub me on, on YouTube and let me know that there's a problem. Thanks for stopping by.